Hi everybody, my name is Adam. Welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. So today I'm going to try to do a quick, I say quick, it's probably not going to be quick, but I'm going to try to do a quick video on the top five compressors that I use the most in my mixing with a little bonus at the end with um, some limiters that I use in mastering. So the first one that I'm going to bring up is the uh, Waves C1 sidechain. I use this quite a bit on stuff, and if you watched any of my other videos, you know that I do use this on uh, vocals, guitars, and all sorts of other things. This is basically a frequency selective compressor. Um, and in this case, you can see on vocals, I'm gonna solo this, and I'm going to, okay, so let me start with this. If you pull up this plugin, go to the presets, go to high frequency limiter, and then you just select which frequency you want, and then threshold. I don't mess with anything else. April, come she will. Okay, so if you select sidechain, this will give you an idea of the frequency that you're selecting. And you can move that around. And if you hit passive, that, when streams up. that basically takes it completely out. And you can add it back. April. Come she will when streams are ripe and so you can see I'm just hitting this a little bit. Um, it may get a little more in some of the autumn winds blow chilly and cold. More when uh, June some lower frequencies come in. It may hit a little bit, a little bit more. But and then I've also got another instance of this on the vocals, and this is at around 2k. And this just takes a little bit of the edge off of the off the vocal. And I'll do a quick thing with that. June, she'll change her tune. Let's go here. In a restless walk, she'll prowl the night. In a restless walk, she'll prowl the night. In a restless walk, she'll prowl the night. It's just a little bit of that. Um, that 2k area just take a little bit of that out smooths it a little bit down not quite as harsh on the ears so that's that okay the next one is a de-esser it's the massey de-esser there's a lot of really great de-essers out there slate has one waves has one um, they're all fairly decent um, but my favorite go-to has been this massey one it's it's actually fairly cheap um, but i um for whatever reason it's just kind of stuck with me and i use it uh, um, on all my vocals. I just, I really like the way it sounds. Um, really simple to use. There are some different stuff you can mess with down here. I don't, I really don't mess with any of that stuff. The only thing I'll mess with is the frequency, the reduction, and sometimes uh, how much wet dry mix that I'm putting in there. Um, sometimes I'll have this at 90, sometimes I'll have it at 10. There's really no rhyme or reason. So here you can press and hold the frequency and it will give you an idea of what you're actually selecting. In a restless walk, she'll prowl the night. In a restless walk, she'll... So you can see I'm hitting five or six dBs worth of reduction on that on those siblings. Um, I would say this to anybody. I, I feel like, um, especially if it comes to YouTube videos, not enough people are using DSers. I feel like if you're not sure you should use one, you probably should. Don't just put it on if you're not sure and just do three, four dB at the most of, of compression and just, just leave it on there and then kind of play with the bypassing of it, um, different frequencies, depending on, you know, if it's talking, a male, a female, whatever. But um, I think it's a really important compressor to have on vocals um, and that's even spoken stuff. So um, don't it don't add too much because it will make somebody sound like they have a lisp. All right. So my next compressor is kind of a newer one in my in my uh, tool belt toolbox. Yeah. Anyway, it's um, it's this Capital MC mastering compressor, this valve compressor. Um, I've started using this since they put it into their um, subscription package. And uh, at first I wasn't quite sure about it, but then I watched a video on um, Universal's uh, website about some of the details of it and but just more how to use it. 
And um, it was really insightful. And after that, I started using on everything. I used on acoustic guitars, and if you watched my past video on acoustic guitars, I used the the Pueg Child plugin, uh, which is a Fairchild emulation by Waves. Um, this is a really good plugin. I use it on guitars where I'll be hitting three to five dBs. And on this, you can do that because it does sound a little more transparent than say an actual Fairchild does. So it allows you to really kind of kind of go dig into it a little bit. Now, I also was using the Waves, I'm sorry, the Universal Audio Fairchild um, model as well. This one sounds a bit more like a Fairchild. You start getting past 3 dBs and you really start hearing the compression of the sound of it. And um, it's... I, I, it's not my style, my taste of compression. I don't mind the Waves one because of its transparency. This one, it's not bad. It sounds good, but it, I just can't really compress too much with it or I really start to hear it. Um, but I do like the way this one sounds a lot. It does sound good. Um, I, I think Universal Audio has been killing with some of these plugins. Um, and I wish I would have uh, started using their stuff years ago. So that brings me back to this mastering um, valve compressor that they put in here. Uh, I'll play a little bit here. <laughs> bypass that a little unfair because the level differences but you can see um, where my attack is medium my release is fast uh, I've got the outputs kind of cranked because it does um, add a little bit of um, harmonic distortion, saturation. Uh, and if you watch the video that they put out, they'll explain some of that stuff. Um, and then I'm also using this saturator down here, which I do like a lot. Now, because I've liked this compressor so much, I started using it on basically everything. So I'm also using on vocal, but I'm not using the saturation and not pushing the outputs as much. Um, and you can see I've got slightly different attack and releases on it. And then I'm also using this uh, on, ma on my master as well. Uh, you can see um, I'm a little bit uh, here, fast, uh, slow attack, fast release. It's my dog. And then, um, you know, here I'm maybe using just three or four dBs of compression. Um, but, um, well, let's just see, actually. Get some vocals. In a restless walk, she'll prowl the night. Yeah, so a couple dBs. Uh, you know, on my mastering, I don't really try to hit stuff hard. Um, just a little bit here and there, and you can see my mastering chain right here. All right, so my next one that I use a lot is Sooth 2, and this is by Oak Sound. Um, this thing is amazing. I highly recommend checking this thing out. It's not expensive, uh, and it does, it's basically um, does like what a lot of the C1 sidechain stuff um, did, where it's just very selective. You select the frequency that you want and it's compressing that frequency so uh for instance on this guitar and you can see i actually have two instances on this particular guitar um one where i'm just notching out low end stuff and then another one that's a little bit more broad based so uh let me get that off so uh, you can see and i even have the mix here down to 60 percent so, uh, you know, on top of um, the, well, the side chain, so this guitar, um, for whatever reason, I must have been fighting with some of the low end stuff. So had a little bit of the side chain and then a little bit of this. And then you go into here <laughs> in a minute and some more. So my thing is, and I've talked about this in another video where I, um, with EQ and compression, I don't like just doing it all with one, like doing it just a little bit. And that's because with the compression curve and even with an EQ, you know, there's, there's kind of that knee, that curve to it. So you get, you know, those first few dBs of 
of, of compression even or even EQ, I think is kind of the sweet spot there. And then past that, it starts to get kind of ugly. So then, um, you know, so I'll just do a couple here, a couple there, a couple there, and it might be all the same stuff, but it's just a couple here, a couple there. And to me, that sounds better. So, I mean, with this guitar, I'm even taking out low in there too. So, um, so the Oak Sound Sooth 2, I'm using this, uh, you know, I've got two instances there. Um, I've got one on vocals where I'm kind of doing the same stuff. April, come she will. Cool thing about this uh, plugin too is they do have a, quite a bit of presets. And I think compression presets aren't that bad. A lot of times there's some really interesting stuff in there that can give you some ideas or at least give you a starting point. Um, for a particular instrument that you might be struggling with or just trying to work with. But, you know, when it comes to, like, say, presets for equalizers, not quite as useful. Um, but this does have a lot. Um, it's very useful. And you can kind of... They have videos on this, too, to kind of go through some of the interface and talk about what some of the stuff does, like soft and hard. Both of these um, sound great, and they both have their merits for when you're working with something and and trying to dial in what you want uh, i even have this guy on uh on my mastering as well so you can see it up here so my last compressing plugin that happens to be one of my favorites is the 1176 um this thing is hands down my favorite compressor of all time and i don't mean just the software the hardware units as well i have a hardware unit that i compress um, when I'm recording vocals, I go into that and then I go into Pro Tools. I don't hit it really hard, but I do um, I do try to get a couple dBs worth just going in. And then in the mix, um, I will use it on vocals. April, come she will. And you can see this is my attack. This is my release. And then you can see I've got the mix at about 50% on this. This is the Universal Audio 1176. Um, I love the way they sound. I think it sounds fantastic. I used to use the Waves CLA 7, uh, 1176. That thing sounds really good too. Um, but um, there might be some others that are great. Let me know in the comments if there's one that you like in particular. I wasn't real big on the Slate, um, the ones that are in there in his um, VMR or whatever it is. Um, wasn't real big on those. Um, oh, and, and Avid actually has a fairly interesting one called the BF76, which has been out forever. Um, and that thing's like really interesting. It adds a lot of really cool character, um, but it it's really kind of um, very selective in what you use it for. In fact, let me bring up something that I recently used it on. All right, so uh, I recently used this BF76, and I, I never use this thing just because it does have a very unique, very compressed-sounding character. So it's really hard for me to use it on the material that I work with. Um, but it is very cool-sounding, and this is... I used this recently on a song that we did. It was called um, Hurt. It was the Nine Inch Nails cover song. <laughs> All right, so that's with it in, uh, this is with it bypassed. Sounds just like a piano. Add it back in. Yes, so good, so good. This is in the mix. Goes away. It just adds a whole different vibe to that piano. Anyway, that thing's really cool. I like it a lot, but I never use it. This was a once in a long, long time sort of vibe, but it's cool. And if you're working with maybe some more rock music, um, I, I recommend definitely checking that out because it can definitely add some really cool character. All right, so that was it for my five top compressors that I use. Um, and as I said, I would talk about a bonus... Um, of the limiters that I use while mastering. Um, the first one, which I've used the most um, in the last 15 years, is this guy, which is the PSP Vintage Warmer 2. Um, 
this thing sounds fantastic and it sounds good for the material that I'm mastering with where there's not um, a lot of percussion. It's mostly acoustic guitars and vocals. Uh, and I think this works really well for that. Um, I'll pull this up and I'll just go to mix finalize three preset. And then I just kind of, I set the output to minus 0.2 and then I just um, adjust the drive to the levels that I want. So, um, you know, if it might be like in the VU meter, two or three dBs, um, man, then, you know, just to the loudness that I really kind of want is what I use this to adjust to. Okay, so lately, though, I've been using this, which is Stephen Slate's latest mastering compressor. Now, he used to have, a, a, he used to have one that was just called the FG mastering compressor, and it sounded great. Unfortunately, it just didn't get loud enough. Um, so they recently released this FGX2 and it sounds fantastic. I think this is definitely one of the better sounding limiters. There's some pretty good presets in here. Uh, you can kind of just go through, start with whatever, kind of give you an idea. Um, I don't use the, the compressor here, so I usually will just turn that off and then uh, the I basically I'm all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do minus 0.2 for the ceiling and then I'll just adjust this to gain these guys right here are kind of interesting and can kind of help bring out maybe some of the stuff that gets lost in um, in mastering uh, and I'd be careful with these the you know, kind of I'd be very very light with them and you can kind of dial those to taste and then you just adjust the gain to the levels you need it to be at. So for now, this is kind of my go-to limiter for mastering. The PSP Vintage Warmer 2 is still there. I still like it. But for now, I am going to be using this FGX2 until it doesn't work on a song, and then I'll try the, the, the PSP. Uh, okay, well, I think that's it. Um, if you guys have a compressor or a limiter that you think I should try or that you really like, leave a comment below. I'd be Definitely interested in taking a look at some other stuff. Thanks for watching.